What are you doing? I'm not doing anything weird. Probably. Dark Eagle, do you have your clothes on? Somebody fire that guy. You're waiting for your mom to respond. <laughs> <laughs> we do know that now. That was hilarious. Three, two, one. Welcome to episode three of Geek Cetera. I'm your host, Wild Josh, and I'm joined today by everybody's favorite, super friendly. Not everybody. Well, debatable. His mom's favorite. True. And the, the very well-rested Dark Eagle, seeing that he For sure. skipped out on last episode. That's Say me. hi, guys. Hi, Hello. guys. So in this episode of Geek Cetera, super friendly offends our female listeners with a new theory. Dark Eagle thinks Disney is taking over the world. And I want more Yoda. Now, let's get geeky. We're going to start off this week by past week not so long ago, where we get to talk about things that we did in the last week that were geeky or nerdy. And we're going to start with you, Super Friendly. What do you have for us? Well, I have some geeky news and then just some random, Just it's just news. I'll start with the just news, but it's big news. I have accomplished what I set forth to accomplish with this podcast. I'm probably set to retire. If you remember, I said this in episode one. I'm just happy if my mom listens. So if you'll remember. vaguely familiar. I don't remember. I'm not even sure if that's your voice or if you actually said that. You were were there. So it is official. I got a text from my mom last night. She said she listened to our podcast. My mother is a listener. I can retire from this podcast a happy man. Now, what I want to know, though, is, is your mom team Wild Josh? Team Super Friendly or Team Dark Eagle? She's all Team Dark Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> that is not making it onto the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is your mm. wife there? No, no. She's, she's at some party. Is Darker Eaglet there? <laughs> Darker Eaglet. That's a good Darker name. Eaglet. I like that. Darker Eaglet. That's perfect. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's great to hear about your mom. My father actually told me that he listened, and he had some uh, criticism for us. He said that it was too long and too geeky. Hmm. So I think yeah. he missed the point a little bit. I guess so. Did he listen to a whole podcast? No. He said he felt very bad shutting us off, but he <laughs> only got about 30 minutes. He did say that he thought we had good banter. I have no banter, so I think he was talking about you guys. I think he would be Team Dark Eagle or, or Team Super Friendly. We definitely need t-shirts. We'll have to and get instead our of I'm with stupid t-shirt, it could be like, I'm with Team Dark Eagle. Why would I be with Team Dark Eagle? <laughs> Good I don't choice. Know. Good choice, <laughs> Super Friendly. I will move on from that onto the nerdy news. I listened to parts one through nine of the Ready Player One audiobook, as read by Will Wheaton, as shared with me by Wild Josh. Unfortunately, parts one through nine is not the entire audiobook, but what I've heard is very good, and I can't wait to add my findings from my listen to a future podcast. And then I watched shaky cam footage of the Avengers Infinity Wars trailer. Not impressed because it was shaky cam footage. But I am happy to report that Thor does meet up with the Guardians of the Galaxy, as we mentioned in episode one. So that did come true. Yay, us. They did say, I was reading an article, that you'll need to see Thor Ragnarok to understand why he's floating in space like that. So that is a fact. I I was scrolling along YouTube this afternoon and actually found a shaky cam footage as well. And I watched it. And I have to say, I was actually kind of disappointed that I watched it because it was really poor quality. There was someone's head in the entire thing, and then every time there was a different character, the whole audience would clap, and I was missing things. But I'm looking forward to seeing the real version, hopefully soon. Same here. So we'll move on to you, Dark Eagle. What did you do this past week? So one of the first things I did, and maybe you guys have already listened to this, I don't know, or read it. I started listening to Thrawn, the Star Wars book that's actually canon. It's not the old Thrawn series. It's written by the same guy, Timothy Zahn. And I've got to say that it's phenomenal. The listening to it is what makes it great. The guy who reads the book does Thrawn's voice very much like the guy who did it in Star Wars Rebels. And when he speaks, he just has this presence about him, even in the book, that it's just, it's so powerful. 
and it's so good, and I'm just thoroughly enjoying it. It also chronicles Governor Price, who is also in Star Wars Rebels, and her beginnings and how she becomes the governor. And I kind of sympathize with the Empire, actually. They paint the Empire in a very non-threatening manner throughout this book. <laughs> just saying. They seem Do like you know about guys. the Death Star? <laughs> I'm unaware of the Death Star. Even the way they paint Thrawn, I think he's playing the long con, but he's had some more sympathetic moments than I would expect from him. It's been a very interesting read. This last week, I got to play five new board games, which is huge for me. I don't usually play a lot of new board games, so I was kind of excited. The bad thing is not all of them were that good. So I'll shoot it over to you, Wild Josh. Okay, very good. So in the past week, I gave in and saw Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. I made a post about it, my feelings on it, which you can find on our blog. And I don't know that we've ever talked about our blog, but you can go to our blog, which is geek cedrablogspotcom You can find a little bit more information about stuff that we're into on that on there. And I made a post about the five reasons why I liked Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. I, I did enjoy the movie, although I will not say it's my favorite movie. I ended up liking it more than I expected. So should I go and see it? You should read the read my blog post. Because if you go in to this movie thinking, this is going to be a fantastic cinematic masterpiece, you're going to be severely disappointed. But if you go into it like thinking, this is going to be a fun kind of goofy movie, then you'll like it, I think. I wasn't going to go into it thinking it's a cinematic masterpiece. I saw the horrendous ratings that it has gotten was expecting it just to be beautiful visually and to be an atrocious story it is beautiful visually i don't think it's an atrocious story i think okay. it has some atrocious acting i think mm. if i had to wrap up the problem uh, the main characters the two main characters valerian and Dehan and, yeah yep. i just i didn't get them i didn't buy into the their the role and obvious, and there was another character in there too that was kind of a, a goofy character. Uh, Rihanna was in the movie. I don't know if you knew yeah, that. Yeah, that I was a weird casting. I wasn't expecting that, and I didn't think she was a very good actress either. The rest of the actors I thought were good, and I thought the story actually had something different. So Rihanna was in that. I'm trying to think. She oh, you know what movie she was in? I think was Battleship. Yeah, I never oh, watched that. I never trash. saw Battleship. Uh, I never. Saw I did that. not watch that either, and I'm kind of okay. thinking maybe I'll just keep her on my not watch list. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a good idea. She plays an interesting character in this, and I will say, when she's introduced, it's kind of uncomfortable. I'll leave it at that. Why is she singing? She is a uh, dancer. Oh, I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So her species is she can change into whatever you want, basically. So yeah, that's how she's using her talents. And uh, instead of it just being touched on, they kind of go into this longer scene where she does a little of her, her dancing. And then and nothing really is, is vulgar or bad. Like, you don't see anything. But it was just uncomfortable. I'm sitting there thinking, I could have done without this. That's kind of weird. I also played some Horizon Zero Dawn. I play that pretty much every week. But I didn't play a whole lot. I didn't have a whole ton of time. Played some Are we Galaxy still on What Did You Do? Yes, yeah. yes, we're still there. That was That's my fault. Awesome. I told you. I'm sorry. I had a lot. <laughs> and then I played I played some Galaxy Heroes. Not much to say there. I did get another iOS game. I forget. Golf Clash or something like that. Kind of fun. Wish it had a single player mode, but it, it's just like TV, like multiplayer. So that's all I have for this past week. This segment is brought to you by Geeksetera. Our moms listen. So this next segment, I haven't really talked too much about the board games I play, but I am a very, very big board gamer. My wife and I and my cousin and brother-in-law, actually, we play a lot here at our house. This last week, I got to play five new board games. The bad thing is not all of them were that good. I'll start with the worst ones. I'll give you a brief description and then why I either hate it or like it. There's no real middle ground. That's just... The... There's never a middle ground with you. No, there isn't. It's one way or the other. So this game Fuse... The group of people, it's a cooperative game. You're working together to defuse a bomb. But the way the bombs are is you get these cards that require specific dice to defuse the bomb. The die have different faces, so there's one through six, but then there's also six different colored dice that you can get. You stick your hand into a bag, pull it out, roll the dice, and then each of the people playing take one dice and add it to this bomb they're trying to defuse. 
And there's little idiosyncrasies to it that kind of make it more difficult and whatnot. You have an app that works with it that counts down and you have 10 minutes to defuse on the easiest level, 22 bombs. I found it extremely boring, uninteresting, and extremely random. And basically, I hated it. So I would not recommend it. I like games that incorporate apps and other devices to go along with it. I really do like that. I like that a lot. But this one was basically more or less just a timer. Most of it had to do with the dice. And it was far too random and just clunky to me. Which some people may be offended by because the guy who designed this, his last name's Klenko. I can't remember his first name. I think it's Cade or Kane Klenko. He's a super hot designer right now in the board gaming world. His other game, Covert, is very popular. In Covert, you're each playing the spy. And it's a worker placement, dice-driven set collection game, which I know to probably Super Friendly and Wild Josh means nothing. But to anybody who knows board <laughs> games, you'll understand a little bit of that. It's a fun game. You're basically going around this map of Europe trying to collect these different spy-type items, and you're trying to get these to complete missions that you have hidden behind your board. The first person to get six missions, the game ends. Whoever has the most points is the winner. The problem with it is it's dice-driven again. It's super random, and what I found is I don't enjoy games that are dice-driven because there's just too much chance. And Ryan, my cousin, won, and he'd even admit he won just because things fell his way. He didn't think that it was anything special he did. Things just kind of fell perfectly in place for him in this one round, and he won the game. So I was not a huge fan of Covert either. The, the other one that I didn't really care about, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. It's a very similar game to Clue in the sense that you're trying to figure out who the murderer is. But it has a few spins. I actually think that while Josh and Super yep. Friendly, you would enjoy some aspects of this game. I love I think, Clue. Uh, oh, goodness. That's wonderful to hear. Anyway. It's I'm, so refreshing to have you back, Luke. Good. I'm <laughs> glad. Well, that's what I try and be. That's my goal. It He's is not so getting obvious. paid to be refreshing and positive. <laughs> that's right. He's not getting paid. That's true. I'm not. So we're going to need to change that. So this Deception Murder in Hong Kong, it's a little bit more advanced than Clue. It starts off, you remember how we played that game Assassin? It's kind of similar to that and how it begins. Assassin? What did we used to play in your house where like 20 of us? Oh yeah, Assassin. Yeah, so you get dealt out cards. There's investigators, a forensic scientist, and the murderer. If you get the murderer card, you're going to end up picking the murder weapon and a piece of evidence. If you're the forensic scientist, you know who the murderer is and what they chose, and you're kind of trying to help the investigators to figure out how the murder took place. And then each turn on the investigator's turn, they get to ask the forensic scientist a yes or no question to help them narrow it down. All the while, while the murderer is still part of the game and trying to throw people off. Interesting hmm. dynamic. After a few plays, though, it kind of gets a little bit stale. Oh, now, those were okay. the horrible ones that I really didn't like. So I've got two to talk about. I'm going to be brief about them, though. Unusual Suspects was a super cool board game. Anybody who knows me, I love to be judgmental. I love judging people. <laughs> it is my favorite thing to do. This game is all about judging. It's another murder investigation kind of game. You set up a board of 12 pictures of people. One person has a card. They're the witness, and they see which person is the murderer. The rest of the group draws these cards that are questions, and the person who is the witness has to answer yes or no so that the other people can slowly whittle down who the murderer is. So it's an adult guess who? Yeah, I would describe it that way. But it's more fun because it's based on the person who's the witness. So I may look at a person and say, man, this person, they definitely play board games. They hate their neighbors. But the people around me may be thinking, no, that person, they love their neighbors. They would always greet them. You have to know the person who's the witness. And I kind of, when I was the witness, I got to be judgmental. I got to call these people like I saw them. And it was fantastic. Hmm. Highly I'd recommend like to try that. I think both you guys would like it. It leads to a no, lot of No, I already play that game with you all the time, Luke. Well, that's, that's <laughs> called life, Kyle. The last one I'll talk about, it's called Chaos Moss. Again, I'll try and be brief with it. It's a very unique style of a game. Basically, is a game of hide-and-seek. You get all these different aliens... And what's happening is their universe is breaking down. But there's this egg called the ovoid. And that ovoid, whoever controls it, will be able... Yeah, I know, it sounds a little racy. I'm not going to lie. 
that ovoid, whoever controls it, will be able to remake the galaxy in their image, so to speak. Actually, to be honest, one of the characters is super racy. The <laughs> one that my dad assigned to me was like this. She wanted to bond with the ovoid. Yeah. It was kind of freaky. I don't know what kind of game he got me into, but I didn't play that character. So the way it works is there's probably 12 different planets, and each of these planets have cards put inside of them. And you can visit the planets, and the ovoid could be at one of those. Once you get the ovoid, it's kind of a difficult thing to determine what to do. If you want to hold on to it until the game ends, or if you want to hide it somewhere, you can put bases on planets to defend. You can put vaults that require keys or even traps. It's a very interesting game. It's very, very tense, but we had a blast playing it. Uh, there is You can attack your enemies, and if you do, you can steal cards from their hand. You can look at people's hands with certain cards. There's a lot of neat strategy to it. Interesting. That one I actually think Kyle and you would really like as well because it's it's a heavy strategy game. It sounds very simplistic, but there is a lot of strategy that goes into it, especially if you get the ovoid, because then you have to figure out what to do with it. The game only lasts a set number of turns, 48 turns. So if you have six players, you actually don't have a ton of time to take a lot of turns because it, it ticks down pretty fast on you. So it's a very interesting concept. And I'm going to stop there. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, I've talked too much. I'll talk about it next week because I'll still be playing it next week. Hmm. So those are the five things. This segment is brought to you by Geeksetera. We sponsor our own stuff. So now we're going to move on to the segment, fan theories that make Dark Eagle scream because he seems to get very angry at any theories that we bring up. And we're going to start with you, Super Friendly. What do you have for theories this week? I'm going to lose it on this theory. This theory comes with a disclaimer, so we're going to pause uh, a minute for our network to throw a disclaimer in there. The following equation is not a true theory. It does not reflect the actual views or opinions of Kyle or the members of the Geek Setter team. It is presented for entertainment by you only. And Super Friendly in particular considers neither his wife nor women in general evil. Super Friendly also has no desire to sleep on the couch or be in the podcast. But anyways, it's, it's just saying please don't divorce me. All right, so my theory for this week, are girls evil? Math says yes. <sighs> Guys. <sighs> That's you haven't wrong. even heard anything yet. Well, just do your stupid equation. Guys, what are girls to you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to stay silent. Uh, we're all married, so girls are our life. So if we were to put <laughs> that into an goodness. equation, girls are your we're life. Not. Time and money, right? Wait. <laughs> wait, that's a, uh, wait no. oh, you my. can't say that. Goodness. You really didn't think about this, did you? Keep yeah. going. I want to hear more. Please. All right. So I can dis dismantle it at the end. Okay. Girls equals time times money. Okay. But some people say that time is money. If time equals money, then girls equal money times money. So girls equal money. And you may have heard that money is the root of all evil. So money equals evil. And that's how we come to the equation where girls are evil. I will say that if there were no girls... There would be no boys because they're the mamas. They are essential to life. They are I'm not, not following. What if God just created Adam? Then there would be just Then one we would have died out. There we wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's fair. I don't I don't think girls are evil. Well, I don't think girls are evil either. I was just you know, counterpointing. Well, I know, I know, I know super friendlier and she seems like she would not be into this theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. <clears throat> it's an interesting theory. I'm not buying into it in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I said that in the disclaimer too. <laughs> okay, good. We don't listen to disclaimers. No, <laughs> uh, no, that one was know. all in fun. I just, I just remember I that know. from a few years ago. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay, I we know, know you joke. don't hate... We, we know... know you, yeah, you don't hate Disclaimer. women. Disclaimer. Listeners, we know Super Friendly really loves women. He doesn't hate them. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean you're, we're trying to help you out here. Yeah, let's, we, we gotta move on. Let's move on to uh, Dark Thank Eagle. Goodness. Mine's kind of crazy, too, though, but it's fun. So, first of all, have either of you ever watched the show Continuum? No. Yes. Kyle, you did. How much of it did you watch? Enough to get bored. Okay, well... Is that just the first season then? Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so the first season. I feel like this is a conversation we had earlier about whatever show dark I was matter. watching. Yeah. Dark yep. Matter. 
So yeah, the first season is kind of rough. The second season is some of the best storytelling I've ever seen in TV. And then the third season is horrendous, so much so that I haven't watched the fourth season, which is the final season. Regardless, this is why this is on my mind. So I know you guys talked a little bit about this last week. Oh, but you guys were talking about Stargate and how they were doing their own app. So I was reading an article, I think yesterday, that Disney is announcing in 2019 they will have their own streaming service. So it's a little bit more to me than the Stargate thing because Disney controls so many major franchises right now, particularly, in my mind, the two most important franchises, Marvel and Star Wars. I think they could potentially put a dent in Netflix subscribers because Netflix will lose a lot of the things I love to watch on Netflix, which is the Marvel movies it has right now and the Star Wars movies, including any and all future Star Wars and Marvel movies. And they've also said that they plan on creating their own original content to put exclusively on their channel, which I would have my fingers crossed that that would be something like a Star Wars show or a Marvel show, who knows them. I have this theory that in the future, much like Continuum where the corporations take over the world, that it will be Disney, Google, and Amazon that control everything. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. In fact, I believe that it will be 100% fact in 20 years. In 20 years' time, Amazon, Google, and Disney will own everything in the world and will all be their slaves. I like that. I, I I like the idea of well, I don't like the idea of being a slave to Disney or Amazon or sure. Google or any of that. Sure, that was maybe a little extreme. That was a little extreme, but I do like the idea of being able to get content from sources like Disney or Star Trek or whoever. Or we talked about that a little bit last year. I mean, last week. Last um, year, that'd be impressive. Last year, yeah. I, I want if that's the going to be the case, and I'm going to have to pay extra for it. I yes. want content that I'm only going to get on that. And it's got to be enough content that I'm, I'm, I'm willing to shell out the money every month. I, I agree with you. I don't want MGM and Sony and Fox and Disney to all have their own streaming services that I have to pay money for. Because I'm not going right. to do it. That's ridiculous. But think about just Disney. How could you not do Disney? All the Marvel movies they have, the Star Wars movies that they're pumping out time and time again, if they put Star Wars Rebels on there, the Clone Wars everything Star Wars, I couldn't imagine myself not wanting to have that. Yeah. So I did a little reading, too, on on what you just said. It seems like Disney has already made some contracts with some other streaming right. entities till like, 2021 or something like that. So they're not even going to be able to get back all their content for several more years. It's true. But, I mean, I don't know. The article I read didn't say when they'll pull it from Netflix. They just said that in 2019, they plan on launching their own. It's interesting. Yeah. They have they had stock in some streaming company, and they decided to completely buy out the company because they liked it so much and are yeah. now going to use that company to be their streaming service. I, I definitely, if, the, if it was new content that we haven't gotten before, and it has to be a fair amount of content. And it can't, it can't be like, I don't care about cartoon Disney stuff. I want Star Wars. I want Star Wars and Marvel, really. That's what I want from them. And the thing is, too, that I run into is that I'm buying most of the Star Wars stuff that comes out anyways. So it has to be True. the only way I can get it is through the service. True. Because if, it, if I can get it elsewhere, I'm probably going to get it elsewhere and own it. What do you think about it, Super Friendly? I'm down. Cool. As always, very, very insightful. Well, I mean, what do you want me to say? It's that Disney. Was, that was a good theory, but I don't know that it was as good as the girls are evil theory. So, well, I didn't want to be worse than that. I just well, wanted to be a little controversial. More, I mean, no, it's not controversial. That's that's the thing. Anyway, well, I'm good. That's what I wanted to say. 2019. I think they're going to have to give us a free couple months with that to see if we like it. Oh, are sure. you kidding free me? Trial. What? No, no. All right, here it goes. You don't think we're going to get a free some the trial of it? You think Disney's going to give you something for free? All the streaming services give you a month for free. They're not going to buck not this, the trend. No, no, no. no they are going to buck the trend because you know what? Disney, Disney? content is going to be... Yes, Disney content is so... Disney is so exclusive that I bet you it's only going to be on a limited release. And you're going to have to be... It's like when sports teams sell season tickets. You're going to have mm. to be on a waiting list to get the streaming service when someone else... Uh, declines oh. their option no. for the screening service. 
then you're going to get it. You're going to have to pay crazy. a premium just to be able to get on the list. Disney's okay. going to make money off of this. Well, then, of course they're going to make money. Disney makes money with everything it does. They're not going to do that. They're going to buy into the system of streaming. This is the way it works. You get a free month, and then you get the people hooked. Nope, they're going to change the way it works. Spotify now char- charges $10 a month. Do you think Disney's not going to go for at least 10 No, I think they probably would do 10 That's the sweet spot right there. I yeah, mean, but maybe even I more. I think maybe they'll do even more, more than 10 Hulu, or the non, excuse me, commercials, no commercials, is, yeah. I think, $12 or $13 a month. They're not going to do I, cheaper than that. Yeah. And may, you know what? Maybe you will get some free stuff from Disney streaming, but it'll be something like that. Star Wars. What's that new Star Wars show with the cartoons and the girls? Rebels? No. no. You're thinking of the other one, the one that's oh. female base. Yeah. yeah. No. Star no. Wars Forces of Destiny. There it is. I could see them giving maybe you access to like, that's like a web series. junk. Yeah, it's webisodes. Yeah. There's a lot of Disney junk. You know, I know there's a lot of Disney For great sure. stuff, but there's a ton of Disney junk. There really is. And I feel that's like what that's what they're going to be sti- spitting out is like no, a lot of the Disney junk. No. That'll so be you think, what you're going to get for free. You think with this streaming network, we're going to get some really cool Star Wars live action TV show? And yes, it's going to be up to par with a movie or something? Yes, I believe that. Because that's the way the world is going. The streaming it, companies are creating their own content. And that content is some of the most popular TV there is. A lot of them can do whatever they want and throw it on their site. Nobody cares if it's TVMA or how much blood or gore or whatever. They don't care. But if Disney's going to do this, they're going to go all in. They're going to produce some of your stupid little fairy shows that are useless for like one-year-olds. But I think they will invest in some more hardcore stuff. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not what I meant. Well, but that's my that's my opinion. That's, I know. There's no I agree. Basis for that. I agree that the future is in streaming. But look at what it is number one right now on TV. It's HBO. HBO has got the number one show right now with Game of Thrones. People have to pay for for the channel. Yeah, but you know that's what's not, not far streaming. behind that is stuff like Orange Is the New Black and House of Cards. Those are all big time shows that Netflix has started. Uh, I think they're far behind it. Well, I can tell you right now, the number two show on IMDb is from Netflix. Why? Ozark. Any reasons why? What? No. What's Ozark? Ozark. It's a new one that they've just recently put out. You know what's number six? Orange is the New Black. You know what's number seven? Stranger Things. Yeah. So I don't know what Ozark. My, it's, it's not one I'm interested in. It's not geeky or anything. It's all just pretty much, it's about gangs, if I remember correctly. Hmm. I would say on IMDb, which I don't, you know, that's what I'm basing this off. In the top 50, you probably have five or six that are from Netflix. That's and just you just a, named three or four in the top 10. I did. I mean, you're right, Josh. I don't disagree with what you said about HBO and Showtime. They're pumping out big shows too. But I think so is Netflix. And Hulu, not as much. They haven't gotten as much critical acclaim. But well, Netflix they, they just is, did with The Handmaiden's Tale or something like I that. Did. I did. That I haven't watched any of that. 10. Yeah, I haven't either, but it is in the top 10. That's a pretty big one. But then lower down, you in the top 50, you've got House of Cards, which I mentioned, and you do have 13 Reasons Why. You have Black Mirror, which is from Netflix. So they easily have 10 in the top 50. I just, well, actually, here's more. Glow, The Defenders, Narcos, those are all still in the top 50, and they're exclusive. Defenders is coming Netflix. away from Netflix. Defenders is? Well, yeah, they're going to Disney. That's true. They will eventually. So that even right there, that's original oh, content yeah. now that Disney will have and Netflix won't in a few years because they're keeping going with that. They've got Iron Fist season two coming out, Luke Cage season two, Jessica Jones, and those are huge. Iron Fist, not so much, but the other ones were huge. And if they're going to produce that kind of stuff, why not try and produce a Star Wars show? Maybe not on the grand scale of, you know, lightsabers and the force everywhere. But even if they did something in the Bounty Hunter universe, you know, something in the slums, I would love to see something like that. But all that speculation, time will tell. Very Gosh, cool. I'm excited for yours. You're excited for mine? I'm going to bring it to Star Wars because Let's that's, do where it. I, that's where I roll. So is Yoda in The Last Jedi? Have you guys heard about this theory? I haven't. No. Stupid. What? <laughs> are you serious? You just went over why women are evil and you think Yoda in The Last Jedi is stupid? Yeah, mine was for entertainment value and I can tell you're already into this. All right, Judge, just give it to us. Okay, well... Disregard it, super friendly. There's a couple reasons people feel like it's possible. I wasn't really buying into it, but now I'm kind of being... I kind of like it. I'm going to put in 
on the blog. It's a still from the trailer, the Last Jedi trailer, where you see Rey, who looks to be practicing her lightsaber saber skills. You see Luke in the background of, behind her a little bit. And right in front of her is a column, a stone column that looks to be about 10 feet tall. And sitting right on top of it is this dark silhouette of a figure that looks like it could be Yoda sitting on top of that stone column. Now, the picture will show it better than I can explain. That'll be on blog, our blog, geek, uh, geek-cetera.blogspot.com. That was one thing, and I saw it a while ago, and I didn't think much of it. But then, in a recent interview with uh, Frank Oz, he was talking about Star Wars The Last Jedi. And, and this is what I got, and I got this from SlashFilm.com. They were talking about an article that Frank Oz did with Variety. And he said, I feel like, a, like I'm a prisoner at war here. I can only give you my name, rank, and serial number. To be true to the people who asked me, and they are kind of my family, I have to say, I've been asked not to talk about it. I love Yoda. I would be happy to talk to you about it at any time they let me. So why is he so worried about talking about anything if he's not in it? I think he had a part in The Last Jedi, and I think that part was playing Yoda. And that's why he's afraid to talk about it. As a force so, ghost. Possibly, but maybe not. Based maybe on he, what? He faded he pulled, into nothingness. Well, maybe he pulled some uh, some Jedi stuff and disappeared. Who knows? Maybe Obi-Wan's alive, too. I don't know. They were well, both shown as force ghosts. Wait, actually, we, we know that Obi-Wan's alive, right? Because he was cloned. No, that, that theory is ridiculous. <laughs> so then the same is true of Yoda. Maybe you just saw Yoda. So maybe... Clone. Maybe Yoda maybe is maybe Yoda's a Force ghost. It, he'd have to be, I guess, a Force ghost. Do you like the idea that Yoda might have a pivotal part in Last Jedi? Yeah, of course I like that. I'd love to see him as a Force ghost. I don't want to see him as a clone, like some crazy super friendly theory that's just ridiculous. They could have got some Yoda skin cells. Sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. In his Yoda hut, right? Is this yeah, like Yoda Obi Wan's? Yeah. Oh, we want on that to Yoda. I mean, he climbed yeah. up Luke's back a lot, so I'm gonna yeah. put that oh. after this this episode goes live. I'll put that that um, article up on Blogspot so that you can see picture. And I'd love to hear whether you think that it is uh, Yoda standing on top of that column, or if it's just a shadow or something else. But I'm buying this theory. I think Yoda is in Last Jedi. I'll oh, is he it. in Last Jedi? Yeah. Oh, is he in Last Jedi? What was that? Where, where are you? Have you been here no. the whole time? Me? Who? What are you he's, talking about? He like has these like he's has these fits every once in a while where he just explodes for no reason. We just were talking about Yoda being in Last Jedi. Yeah, I know. And then no, you no, said no. you think he's in Last Jedi. <laughs> That's what I just no, spent no, no, no. minutes talking there, about. What is that? I don't know. I hear it too though. I don't know what that is. That is weird. That? Yeah. Yeah, that is weird. It sounds like a little little critter is in, in the wire or something. Yeah. I hear a well, crackle every once in a while. Is that what you're talking about? I swear so, I swear it's like a cat cat ball with a bell in it. Maybe someone's hacked our line and they're on here with us. Speak up! Say something! Okay. We'll take that as a no. <laughs> Maybe it's well, just my... It could be my mic scratching across my shirt. That could be could mine be. doing the same, honestly. I, mean, I, would have touching. Be, I would have to be wearing clothes for that to happen. Oh, man, you took my joke. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, back to this Yoda thing. Uh, yeah. My question was, so at first I thought you were just going to come out and say Yoda <laughs> is that person on top of the rock and mm-hmm. that he's in the flesh in the movie, which mm-hmm. I just think that picture is a red herring. Is Yoda in the movie? Yes. Is he in the flesh? Is he on that rock? No. On the rock, it doesn't look Force Ghost-ish. Like, the Force Ghosts were kind of, like, blue and, like, glowy and stuff. It was a solid object on that top of that column. Right, and I just think it's a rock. Okay, you don't think he's there at all? No. All right. Let's move on. This segment is brought to you by Geeksetera, Two Great Guys, and Dark Eagle. News in Rumor Puppy Mill. We're going to talk about different news and rumor items that we found on the web. And we're going to start with you, Super Friendly. I have show news because we have comments from listeners. First of all, DG Weege says, Super Friendly, I agree with your theory on Ray. Thanks, DG Weege. You're the only one. Who yeah, sorry, DG Weege. Who is I feel that? Like, I feel like Kyle made that one up to make himself DG feel Weege. good about his theory. 
This DG Weege, I think we need to get in the show as a guest because I want to uh, find out who they are, whether they really exist, and uh, how much Kyle is paying them. You hear a that, lot. DG Weege? Episode four. All right, I'm going to move on. We have another comment from Chase That Frisbee. <coughs> and he says, Wild Josh, you didn't mention the Psych movie trailer when you're going over San Diego Comic Con stuff. I don't even know what the heck that is. What is the Psych movie trailer? What? Psych was a great show. It ran what? like eight seasons. Psych. Psych. You've never heard of Psych? It was on USA. I know. You know that I'm there not telling the truth. That one. I like that show. That was a good show. I don't know that show. That's Maybe not. It was well done. Yeah, it had some funny episodes, too. I'll definitely check it out. Sorry, Tell, Chase, uh, that, Chase frisbee. that frisbee. Wild Josh is not in the know. Yeah, I only follow geeky things, and that apparently is not geeky enough for, for no, me. No, it definitely is. It's it's a nerdy show. It tackles all kinds of funny things and kind of weird geeky things that they get into. That's I'll just my to, opinion. I'll have to check that out on Hulu if it, it exists on Hulu. It might. It's Hulu. It's on one of the streaming services. I like that we have some comments. That's wonderful. Yeah, and uh, we also have one more from Chase That Frisbee, and this one's for me. He says, mm-hmm. super friendly, I have an issue with your theory. Oh, really? But this one's on the theory from <laughs> Doctor Who. He says, that theory is specific to the episode Blink. In another episode, when the angel is inside Amy, we actually see them moving. So the fourth wall is intact for that episode. Uh, I what would... does mean inside Amy? Like the one where <sighs> Amy dies? Um, spoilers, Luke. You're supposed to give him five seconds. Anyways. I had no bad. idea no. that happened. What the heck? You don't even know who that is, so shut up. <laughs> no, it's 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 this one where I think it's the next episode that we see the angels in, where she has the an image of the angel inside her eye, so she has to keep her eyes oh, closed. You remember that, Luke? That's the, that's the Byzantium, the fall of the Byzantium. Yep. Oh, that's not that's not the that's not fall the crash of the Byzantium. That's the one where they all end up where the doctor has to get them all to find fall back in the time rift there that's in the wall and he that's expands the same one. that. Is it's that really? Yeah, you're right. Two-parter. That's the second part. I was thinking of the first part. I see what you're saying. That is true so, that you move there. You guys yes. are really making me want to watch this show. So it's really good. It's, it is really good. And the only thing I would say to you, Chase, that frisbee, is wait, angels. No, no, wait. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, I totally forgot to add something to what I did last week. Because I watched the Doctor Who episode. You didn't really. You watched half an episode because we no. told you that it wasn't accurate. I watched the whole thing. We finished it. You watched the whole Asylum of the Dial- Daleks? Yes. Wow. Yep. You would have been very I lost. Have no, I have no idea what the heck is going on. <laughs> You'll figure it out. i got to borrow your DVDs or someone's DVDs because I have no idea how to get this. I found the earliest one that I could find that wasn't from like the 60s and I watched it and that's the one it was. Uh, uh, yes, I figured. Uh, continue with your, your response to Frisbee. So my answer to you, uh, Chase That Frisbee, is, yeah, I guess I agree with you that it might be specific to Blink, but the angels, they start to believe Amy can't see them, and that's when they start to move. And when they are being observed, they become quantum locked. Maybe if they think they're not being observed, they can move. So if they think Amy can't see them, and they're not really aware of us seeing them but they think they can't be seen. No, that doesn't work. Chase that frisbee. You are right. You are right. He's he's correct. Nice call, Chase. Well done. We love anybody who will slaughter a super friendly theory we're on board with. We should get Chase that frisbee in here and fire (laughs) super friendly. (laughs) Well, I am retiring, so you can take my spot. I'm I'm on on team Chase that frisbee. And that's all all the comments we have for today. I want to throw out there for anyone else that wants a comment. If you go to our, our, our blog, and I know Josh has meant, while Josh has mentioned it, there's a blog entry for each of our episodes. If you have anything else you'd like to say, throw a comment on our blog. Or you can email us. We have an email. network at gmail.com. Perfect. Let's move on to you, Dark Eagle. I'll try and keep mine brief. I actually don't have a lot to say about any of these. I just find them to be interesting. The first one <clears throat> that I found to be interesting, I think this is old now. I mean, it was probably back at san diego comic-con but that venom is the movie venom which by the way is also has tom hardy cast as eddie brock venom is going to be a horror film with a likely r rating part of the reason i can see that being is because they've confirmed that carnage is the villain 
So that takes him out of being in the next Spider-Man movie. And this really yes, honestly does. fits him more, especially if they do an R rating, which they, they're going to have to if they do Carnage. I'm not super pleased about all this. Honestly, I just would like Venom to fight Spider-Man. But it is what it is at this point. The uh, next thing, you guys are both old. I grew up with an N64. And Nintendo recently filed a patent for a N64 controller. I think a smaller version, actually, than the original. Which leads people to speculate that they're going to release, like they have with the NES and the SNES, a classic mini console version of it. And have probably 10 or 15 games on it that just come preloaded. Which I would be pretty excited about. Like I said, I mean, I grew up with that. It's got some classics on there. Super Mario 64, Star Fox, the 64 on there was really good. Zelda games, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Uh-huh. Phenomenal games, so it would be really cool if they made this. I you youngins, this, you youngins, those aren't classic games. Those They're are classic old. games. The N64 <laughs> is a classic console. All right, classic oh, times for Dark it's Eagle. It's really not surprising because the NES version that they came out with was so uh, successful because it's like printing money. I agree. I mean, the SNES is either it comes out soon, I think, because pre-orders I saw were just taking place. That one's going to do the same, I'm sure. Yeah, I actually want to get that one just because it has uh, Super Mario Legend of the Seven Stars, the RPG, which was really fun. Does it have Mystic Warrior? I didn't see Mystic Warrior on there. Oh, man, me and my friend Dan, we used to play Mystic Warrior all the time. No kidding. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that one. It has a lot of good ones on there, though. Anyway, on to my next one. This one I'm actually extremely excited about. I have very little to talk about with it, just that I heard that it was confirmed, and that's that the scrolls from the Marvel Universe, are confirmed villains for the Captain Marvel movie. I don't know very much about Captain Marvel at all, nor do I really care to, really. But I will see it just because it's Marvel, but now especially because I love the scrolls in the comics. I thought they were really cool. It's also interesting because the movie is going to be set in the 90s. So it will kind of probably be a flashback, because I think Captain Marvel is supposed to be an Infinity War. I don't even know who the scrolls are. Never heard of Super Scroll? He fought the no. Fantastic Four a lot. He had a lot of is their it, abilities. Is it like are they like the Ferengi but for Marvel? They're shapeshifters. So like there was a huge storyline in the comics where the scrolls had pretty much taken over like every major political entity or power on Earth. They had just shapeshifted and gotten rid of the old ones. It was a it was a big Kyle, do you remember the name of that arc? I can't remember what it was called. Secret Invasion. Uh, I knew it was Secret Something. Thank you. Secret Invasion. On to my next one. This last one, again, don't have a lot for. I am a fan of The Flash, the TV show. My wife and I, we watch it. It's got some extremely poor writing uh, and sometimes (laughs) is absolutely atrocious. But overall, I do enjoy the show. And they did announce the season four villain is not going to be a speedster, which is great because that is getting old. It's instead going to be a character who is named The Thinker. He's also known as DeVoe. In fact, he was referenced in a few episodes last season by some of the people from the future that The Flash dealt with. They mentioned one of his greatest nemesis being DeVoe. I don't know anything about this character from the comics, so I did a little bit of research. Basically, it was this dude who was smart. He built this cap that he put on his head that allowed him to control people, had mind control with it, and he also was able to levitate objects with it. His character eventually evolved where like the thinking cap got so small that he implanted it into his brain. And then eventually there was even a character that was called the thinker that was a pure AI life form that was just super intelligent. The Flash and Arrow have always kind of just combined different origins of their characters to make one villain for the show. So I'm sure this will have little bits of all three of those characters peppered into this character, the thinker. But I am excited to see that just because it will not be a speedster, which has gotten so boring. I'm sure there will be some atrociously written episodes this year, as there always are, because the writers are just so stupid. But I will also thoroughly enjoy parts of it. Yeah, I never miss an episode. Arrow's gotten too old for me, but I still catch every episode of Flash and look forward to them. Speaking of terrible writing, the the season finale where Flash can all of a sudden just phase into Savitar's suit. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) What is that? It was such a simple solution to this huge world-ending problem of him not being able to beat this guy he just pops in his suit and wins yeah (laughs) but that's what i mean i know you would agree some of the writing is horrible some of the writing is atrocious i haven't watched arrow in three or four seasons kind of got bored with it after deathstroke 
But yeah, I do watch The Flash. I never miss an episode. Some of the worst writing ever, I will be brief about this, is when he was fighting Zoom. And he discovers that he's faster than Zoom. He can beat Zoom. Zoom kidnaps Wally. And Barry's decision is, well, he kidnapped Wally, so I'll give him all my speed. And he gives him all his speed. And that's the end of the episode. Stupidest writing in the world. If he already was fast enough to beat Zoom, he could have went, beaten Zoom, rescued Wally, and never given up his speed. So bad. Yeah. I got nothing to say about that because I gave up on The Flash like after season one. <laughs> yes, we know you're a DC hater. <laughs> hey, just so you know, Deathstroke, because I caught like the season finale of the last season of Arrow, Deathstroke does make an appearance and he's, he's decent. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. heard he's going to be part of the new season, that he'll be in a few episodes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, that's You're all welcome. I've got for uh, news and puppy stuff. All right, so that's my turn. I will start. <laughs> I don't have a ton of stuff to say. Horizon Zero Dawn, they just announced that they're going to have some DLC coming out for the game. It's going to be the first bit of DLC that we're going to be able to get. It's going to be entitled Frozen Wild, and it's coming November 7th, 2017. I don't know about you, Dark Eagle. I know you play Horizon Zero Dawn, but I'm probably going to be trying to get that as soon as it comes out. So here's my plan. Right now, I'm still borrowing the game. I haven't purchased it. I hope to buy it myself this month. And I'm 66% done, so I'm not going to buy it until I've beaten the game. But I've got a solid, what, three months? And i got a yep. lot of free time this month. So I plan on having it done and owning it and being prepared to purchase it come November. Yeah, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy the game. And by the time you get to the end, you're only going to want more. You're not going to want less. So I'm sure oh, I believe be. that. Yeah. Next thing I got is actually is a rumor. I mean, it's the definition of rumor. This is take it with a grain of salt. There's there's the talk that there's possible spinoff from the Star Trek Discovery TV series that's, art, that's coming out. And it looks like it could be a Wrath of the Con, Wrath of Khan prequel slash reboot kind of thing. The rumor is, and it comes from a report that Nicholas Meyer, who is was the director for Star Trek II: Wrath of Khan, is attached to this idea of rebooting the series in a miniseries that depicts what Khan was doing before Exile, before the events of Wrath of Khan took place. Obviously, the actor that played um, Khan has passed away, so it would have to be a different actor. But the uh, rumor is that they could be rebooting that, which is kind of an interesting idea because they really just rebooted it with the movies, mm, have having true. Benedict Cumberbatch play Khan in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. But we know that that's a different universe, so they could probably still keep the continuity of things. Very true. This segment is brought to you by Geeks Cetera. Some of us look better on the air. All right, our next segment we call Movie Trailers, where we get to talk about different movie trailers that we've checked out in the past week and what we're looking forward to seeing in theaters once it's released. I'm going to start this segment. I saw a trailer for the movie Goodbye, Christopher Robin. I'm looking forward to it. It's actually, if you're not familiar with it, when, it's funny, when I saw the trailer Goodbye, Christopher Robin, I'm like, Christopher Robin sounds so familiar. Where do I know that name from? It's from <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. And the movie is about the creator of Winnie the Pooh. And it's really a story about a father and son bond. See, it reminded me, they did a movie a while back about the writer who wrote Neverland. Or not Neverland. It was called Finding Neverland. What was Neverland? Peter Pan, right? That Finding Neverland movie was about J.M. Barry, the writer of Peter Pan. Or the playwright right. for Peter Pan. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. This, that's what this kind of reminds me of, is that it's the story of the creator of Winnie the Pooh. So it's not the story, it's not Winnie the Pooh we're going to see. It's the, how the guy came up with the idea for Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that one's about the writer A.A. A. Milne and his son, yes. C.R. Milne. So you can guess what yep. C.R. stands for? I yes. got it. Give it for yeah. Robin. Thank you. Yeah. Give you three guesses. The first two don't count. Yeah. Good, because <laughs> I got it. The main character is Ewan McGregor? Yep. But in the Wait, it has... It has McGregor in it. Who's he play? Wasn't it you and McGregor? No, it's Domin Hall Gleason, the guy who played uh, Hux. Randall oh, Hux. Yeah? yeah, General Hux is he's one of the lead characters, and Margot Robbie is one of the other ones. Yeah, he's, you're right. I like Gleason a lot, actually. So that was what I saw for a movie trailer this past week. What about you, uh, Dark Eagle? I watched the new Inhumans trailer, which is kind of interesting. I thought it was mildly better. 
I'm still not excited about it, and I'm very less excited as I've read things about it, and it is getting a lot of hate from comic fans, and even the pre-screenings have a lot of hate. So Mm. I'm expecting it to be atrocious at this point. I don't even understand how this works. One of the producers or director was trying to defend it, and he's like, well, we're still doing some final takes, and we're adjusting things, and I thought, your show is like three weeks from being in the theaters, (laughs) <laughs> I don't understand what more really you're going to be able to do. Maybe some digital effects, but you're not going to be able to make a lot of changes. If people already don't like it, it's not going to go over well. A lot of the complaints are about the costumes. I absolutely hate the costumes. It looks like a cartoon show. I hate the guy cast as Maximus. He looks like an idiot. I think he's going to do a horrible job acting. I'm not pleased at all, and I love the Inhumans, so I'm very, very upset. So that in a word, nice. how do you feel? I'm going to go with hateful. <laughs> Yeah. So that's your one word. Okay, cool. That's my one word. W- w- would you like a different one? I no. Mean, I, could do... I just wasn't clear on your feelings about Inhumans trailers. Please, always ask. I'm very willing to express my feelings. On to my next one. This one looks amazing. I hope it's amazing. Thor Ragnarok. It looks so incredible. You know, watching, like, Hela catch his, his hammer, Mjolnir, and just destroying it. Him fighting with the Hulk. The chemistry between... Hemsworth and Ruffalo is great. I love the scene where they're they're bickering and he's like, oh, we fought? Did I win? And Thor said, no, I, I won easily. And he's like, that doesn't sound right. Just hilarious. Their, their, their back and forth is hilarious. It looks like it's going to be a really funny movie. A good kind of almost like buddy movie. I was reading an article that Marvel said that they're going to do more. They're looking to get more into how they used to do the comics, the Marvel team up, and they put two heroes together and they'd fight a villain. They're going to do some of that with some of their movies, they said, especially getting into Phase 4 after the whole Thanos battle, Infinity War. And this is one of the first ones they said they were experimenting with, and it's Thor and Hulk. And it just looks like it's going to play out perfectly. It looks hysterical. It looks like it's got some incredible action scenes. Even the soundtrack, like, it just reminded me a little bit of like how I felt here in the Guardian soundtrack. It just felt like it fit so perfectly, and Thor 2 wasn't that great. But this one looks like it could be really, really amazing. Frankly, myself, I love Jeff Goldblum. So I'm pretty psyched Mm. that he's a grandmaster in there. I think that'll be really cool to see. I was just going to say, I heard that in the scene where you see the, what do you call him, the grandmaster? Yeah. You can see what looks like in the background to be the collector's tower. So they're wondering if the collector is on the same planet. Could be. They're brothers. The grandmaster and the collector are brothers. So it's very possible. Yeah. Now I'm less confused. (laughs) <laughs> because i was i was like watching that trailer and i would see jeff goldblum and think of benicio del toro yeah and i was like i don't think that's the same character mm-hmm. and then i know benicio del toro's in the new jedi movie and yep that's right i'm all confused yeah yeah no they are different they're brothers so and what's interesting is i believe you could see jeff goldblum's grandmaster in one of the recent marvel movies he was in the end credits. He was dancing. Oh, yeah. For, it was for Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. He was in there. I thought that was kind of just a cool little Easter egg that they included him. Right. He's going to be upcoming. Yep. Um, Josh talked about last week's Stranger Things. I just want to chime in and say that I am super psyched for that. And I definitely am interested in whether or not your theory is correct, Josh, about you know, the creature burrowing. I could see that being the case for sure. So I'm pretty psyched about that. But I, I would love to know what it. other people think about that because if I, I've watched that trailer and I don't see that thing moving, it just yeah. looks like it's staying still. Yeah, so. you could be right. The last thing is going to be met with a lot of hate, and that's fine because it probably will be horrible. But I really liked the new Justice League trailer. I oh. thought it looked very good. I thought the visuals were impressive. Steppenwolf looks very intimidating. I will say that trailers really aren't a good indicator obviously you can see a great trailer and the movie be atrocious and i could easily see justice league being that i don't have a lot of confidence in the writing i don't have a lot of confidence in the universe building that dc has done and i hope because i do like dc not as much as marvel that it lives up to the expectations of how they're trying to build it i severely doubt it but i am hopeful well josh yes do you want me to rebut that i don't agree I thought it looked kind of lame, <laughs> but that's how I feel about most stuff DC does. Here's the only thing I didn't really like in the trailers, is that Batman recruits the Justice League as Bruce Wayne, and... Mm, that's a good point. I don't really like that he's pretty public with them about his secret identity. 
I will say I did think that, and I thought this was really stupid that they got a Flash TV show and they didn't use the same character. But I will say the guy that they picked to play the Flash, he had funny lines that made me chuckle a little bit. That's about all that I really saw in it that was redeeming. Let's move on. Super friendly, what do you have? The only trailer of note for me was Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Mm -hmm. It does look funny. I'm not wild about the video game angle. I feel like the first Jumanji board games, they hold up over time. Through the years, we all play board games. Everybody has board games. We can all kind of relate. But they're using a dated video game console as the vehicle. And yeah, it's from the 80s, but as time moves forward, the movie is going to date itself, where with a board game, it doesn't date itself as much like that. But that being said, transporting them into the jungle, it's its interesting. I, I hate to summon Dark Eagle here, but I might go a little Dark Eagle on you, because I couldn't disagree with you more. I, I, I saw the trailer myself. Have First off, kids these days don't play board games. They play video games. Have you ever seen Tron? That was back in the 80s, and it was people getting sucked into a video game. And it stood up pretty good. I think it's a cool idea that they get sucked into a video game. Instead of it being like a reboot, to me, it is like a, a sequel. I could see that they had Jumanji the board game, and then the next step in the evolution was Jumanji the video game. And Jumanji was an old board game. So yes. the fact that the video game is like Atari age, so you, it's like an 80s kind of looking thing, that it would fall in line, you know, old, 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 and then they have the vintage uh, console game. I liked it. I thought it was a neat idea. Okay, what? but they're looking at a con old console cartridge game, right? Yeah. I'm thinking Super Nintendo. Luke just said he grew up playing the N64. Kids that they're marketing us to probably grew up playing the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox. So that's yes, the old Yes, but that doesn't console. mean they don't know that the Atari existed. You think a kid looks at an Atari and goes, I have no idea what that is? I know what an Atari is. I just think when you bring technology into it, it can date itself. Because you watch a movie you know, from the early 90s, what kind of cell phone do they have? Those big blocky ones. I, then, I liked it. Yeah, okay. No, I, I didn't. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I just, that was my only negative takeaway. I thought but they picked can, pretty good characters, too, though. Like, well, uh, the casting's the, great. Yeah. Oh, the casting is guys, good. It could be, though, one of those things where all the, the funny parts you saw in the trailer. But I think okay. that a, a, a video game angle is a good way of going with it, especially if it's going to be a sequel and not a reboot. Of yeah, I, I guess I agree with you. I, I do agree with you the video game could be cool. You mentioned Tron. Wasn't Tron an arcade game? Yes. I think I see I see a difference there. I'm just I'm looking simply at the console itself, not necessarily that it's a video game because I think our, our arcade games are different than console games. But they're older. Arcade games, I mean most arcade games, like Tron would have it would have been an old vintage arcade cab. Yeah. So in my mind they're different, but mm. whatever. But I'm we'll fine see. with it being that way. You know, they did do kind of a sequel to it already with Zathor or whatever it was. That was Oh, very you're right. Much the same I never style. saw that. Yeah, it was moderate, really. But yeah, this looks better. I like all these guys. I like Jack Black and Karen Gillan and uh, The Rock and all those guys. So I, I hope it's good. All right. Anything else you got for us, Super Friendly? Nah. So tonight we're going to forego doing our great debate. I know we did that last week as well, but we just had so much information to pack into this episode that we didn't feel like making it five hours long. So next week we're going to hopefully get back to the great debate. So we hope uh, you enjoyed this episode of Geek Cetera. Please join us next time and subscribe to us. Check us out on our blog, geek cetera.blogspot.com. Also, if you liked our intro music for today's episode, please check out Mr. Hugs on Bandcamp. But until next time, I'll be back. It's the choice of Steinsgate. I poison the water hole. For more from the geeks, please check out geek cetera.blogspot.com. This podcast was brought to you by the Geek Cetera team. Now this is podcasting.